good evening. My name is Hung Shur, and today we are going to launch a brand new lecture series focusing on Guanyin Bodhisattva, the compassionate being who regards the cries of the world, and the universal door, the Pumanpin of Guanyin Bodhisattva, a chapter from the Lotus Sutra. So if that is what you've come to hear, you're in the right place. Let us begin by putting our palms together. I've got a bell. I'm going to make three half bows. And say, Namo Miao Jue Hui Shang Fo Pusa. Namo Miao Jue Hui Shang Fo Pusa. Namo Miao Jue Hui Shang Fo Pusa. Namo Wan Fo Tang Shang Shang Shen Xia Hua La Ho Shang. Namo Wan Fo Tang Shang Shang Shen Xia Hua La Ho Shang. Namo Wan Fo Tang Shang Shang Shen Xia Hua La Ho Shang. I wanted to point out that if you wanted to hear a translation of this lecture in Chinese, there's a way to do that. Right there on your control panel, on the right-hand corner, there's a little button. You can pick what language you want to listen to this lecture in. Furthermore, if you want to hear a Vietnamese translation, or if you have an elder in your home who doesn't really get along so well with, with Zoom, or with a computer but would like to hear this lecture in Vietnamese, please help them by clicking on the link in the chat box. Go to the chat box and you can find the link for listening to a Vietnamese translation. Uh, all right, thank you to the volunteers who are making it possible for folks to hear this lecture in various languages. Now, I'm going to take us directly to a slideshow. Today, we're not going to actually enter into the Pumanpin, the universal gateway chapter, universal door chapter of the Lotus Sutra, we're going to talk about Guan Yin, Guan Shiyin Pusa, Guan Yin Bodhisattva. Um, here's a slideshow that will help us kind of get oriented. Who is Guan Yin? Anybody recognize this gate? This hall? It's not a gate, that's a hall. This is the Buddha Hall at City of 10,000 Buddhas, where because of coronavirus, um, many of us have not been there for a year. Uh, folks with enough blessings to live there full time are, are there. You can see this every day. The topic of this lecture is the many faces of compassion. The source of my knowledge about Guanyin Bodhisattva is Master Shenhua. In the Tang Dynasty, if you pass through Dunhuang, the oasis on the Silk Road, way, way, way out in the West, amid the desert uh, in Gansu, you would have, if you'd gone to the library where the monks who lived there full times 
as opposed to the monks who were passing through on their camels and on their horses, uh, either going west to Rome or Persia or heading east to Chang'an in China, if you'd gone into the library where the monks kept their books, you would have seen this hanging on the wall. This is a wall hanging. If you were a college student in the 60s and 70s, you had posters on your wall, right? Well, the librarian at Dunhuang had this on his or her wall. How about that? Who is it? It's Guan Yin Pusa. With a thousand hands, a thousand eyes, 42 hands and eyes, beams of light radiating from her head and flames of her aura radiating from her body. How about that? That's a woven wall hanging from the Tang Dynasty. Oh yeah. If you go to a place called Montserrat Abbey above Barcelona, uh, Catalonia, Spain, and go into the, the worship hall at Montserrat, a Benedictine Trappist Abbey monastery, you see this figure. A wooden carving with a baby on her lap, also carved out of wood, distinctly female, holding a pearl or a ball in her hand. The child also has a ball, a pearl. And there's actually a hole in the top that the flower can be put. But it's all gilded in gold. And you say, wow, Guan Yin Bodhisattva, that's amazing. Looks compassionate, right? But it's interestingly not what the Spanish Catholics call this image. They call her the Black Madonna, the Blessed Virgin, Mother Mary. Hmm, the many different faces of compassion. This is interesting. Who is it really? Is it the Blessed Virgin of Roman Catholicism? Is it Guan Yin Bodhisattva of Mahayana Buddhism? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, look at this lovely icon of mother and child. Hmm. Interesting. Here's a stained glass window, contemporary icon, Berkeley Buddhist Monastery's Buddha Hall. When the sun shines through, oh, it is glorious. This is Guan Yin Bodhisattva carved on a pumpkin. The jack-o'-lantern Guan Yin, just beautiful. This has got to be a prize-winning jack-o'-lantern. And we know the artist. In the past, in the past, in ages past, the Buddha, light of proper Dharma, because of great compassion, and although she had, he had already realized ultimate liberation from suffering, still cared enough for living beings so that he made appear a bodhisattva's body. And based on vows to listen to the voices of suffering, returned as Guan Shi and Bodhisattva. Okay, stop right here, take a look. Let's digest that. I think the key line is, a Buddha who had already stripped away all the ignorance covering his or her nature, already realized ultimate liberation from suffering, decided not to stay in ultimate Mahapari Nirvana, but used 
spiritual skill made a bodhisattva's body appear because Buddhas can do that and took on an identity and took on a function said I'm going to come back and help rescue living beings and the quality of that body and that identity was the ability to hear the sounds go back here for just a minute for that one to get the ability to hear sounds right to be able to listen to the voices of suffering and joy and return as the awakened being who hears the sounds of the world okay so far so good now the method that this buddha transformed as the bodhisattva used the method she he used was a sacred name, call the name, recite the name of Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and from troubles, you'll be freed. That's the method. That's how it works. So the name takes on a lot of importance, doesn't it? Look at that name. Guan Yin Pusa, Putongda Ming Hao. What is Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name in Sanskrit? Avalokiteshvara. What is, what is Guan Yin in Tibetan? Chunrezi. Right? What is Guan Yin Bodhisattva's name in Korean? My pronunciation is horrible. Guan Yin. Right? How about Vietnamese? Quan Te Yam Po Ta. Quan Te Yam Po Ta. What about Cantonese? Quan Yam. Quan Yam. What about Taiwanese? <laughs> Worse, my pronunciation Taiwanese. Right? Quan Yin. What about Japanese? Ah. Quan Zi Yom. Quan Zi Yom Po Sa. So this name. What about English? Well, probably Guan Yin, but maybe something like the awakened being who hears the sounds of the cries of the world, something like that. Look at that. Interesting, right? Guan Yin's name in Sanskrit, Avalokiteshvara, Shunrezi, Guan Teum, Guan Yim, Kanzeon, Kanon, Korean, Guan Yin. English, Guan Shri Bodhisattva. Many, many names of Guan Yin. But look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different languages, all of whom, all of which are reaching out for the awakened being of great compassion. Right? Guess what? Hayo. There's Guan Yin Pusa. There's Guan Shi Yin, and also the shortened version, Guan Yin. There's also Guan Yin Yang Yang. Guan Yin Fu Mu, some people would say that's a mistake, inaccurate. Other people, Guan Yin Ma. Right? So look at all these different names. How interesting. People, Guan Shi Yin Bodhisattva, Guan Yin, Guan Yin the Maiden. Guan Yin, the mother of all Buddhas, holy mother Guan Yin. So people have been needing, needing Guan Yin, wanting to have this being hear my cries. And so we have to reach out to her and we've used a bunch of different names. And guess what? There's more. There is the great right? The great disciple, the foremost disciple of the Buddha, Amitabha. Huh, that's Guan Yin Pusa. There's Guan Yin Bodhisattva with a thousand hands and a thousand eyes. Oh. There's Guan Yin Bodhisattva who bestows children on childless couples. Oh, that's one that has a a very special function, much yearned for. 
Oh, the heart reaches out. Guan Yin, hear my sounds, hear my calls. There is Avalokiteshvara and also Avalokita, right? All these different names, all these different identities. My goodness, people need Guan Yin, right? Amitabha's disciple, thousand hand Guan Yin, bestower of children, Guan Yin, she who contemplates at ease. Wow. Oh no, another. There's another list. You bet. Bai Yi Da Shi. Yu Lan Guan Yin. Shi Wu Wei Pusta. Lu Du Mu. Bai Du Mu. Sheng Mu Ma Li Ya. Shi Bu Shi Fu Jiao De Yi Ge Shen. Bu Yi Ding. We don't judge it. So, who else? We have White Robed Guan Yin. Fish basket Guan Yin, bestower of courage, green Tara, white Tara, and controversially, the Blessed Virgin Mary. We certainly won't reject her, but we won't co opt her either. So, how interesting. Look at all these identities of Guan Yin. People reach out for this being. We want Guan Yin. Pictures of a Catholic saint, pictures of a Buddhist saint, but more, more than a saint. Right? How interesting crossover. Hmm. Right? Important to say here, probably say it right at the start, we are not competing to see who owned Guan Yin first. That's not what this is about, right? This is not hoping that the Catholics will give up the Blessed Virgin to the Buddhists. Not that. Uh, the fact that we both, as systems of faith that benefit living beings, we both reach for this compassionate figure when we need someone to listen to us. The compassionate awakened one who hears the sounds of all beings in the world. What an identity. Hmm. Namo Guanxi and Pusa. Probably how the West will pick it up, because why? We can say this. Westerners can go Namo Guan Shi Yin. Right? We've got guan, 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 we don't really have as a sound. Sure is like sure thing. Yin is like in and out. Pusa, that's okay. We can say these words. Even better than Avalokiteshvara. That's, although those are sounds we can make, that's too foreign. Right? And the awakened being who <laughs> hears the compassionate awakened one who hears the sound, too late. You gotta have a name that you can come up with in a pinch, in a hurry, when needed, when panicking, when all hope is gone. Guan Yin Pusa, Namo Guan Shi Yin. Maybe the Namo part we don't remember, but Guan Yin we can do. Okay, 
Now, take a look at this list here. This is a list of places in the Mahayana Hantran tradition, Chinese tradition of Buddhism, where Guanyin Bodhisattva appears, where we meet Guanyin in the sutras. Where in Mahayana Sutras do we meet Guanyin Bodhisattva? In the Lotus Sutras, Universal Door chapter, we're going to be looking into that starting now. The Dharani Sutra, the Sharangama Sutra, with the returning the hearing to listen to the nature. Avatamsaka Sutra, good wealth, Sudhana, the Bodhisattva, encounters Guan Yin as one of his 52 teachers. First door Bodhisattva's next to last chapter has a meeting with Guan Yin. Prajnaparamita Har Sutra, when Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva was practicing profound Prajnaparamita, looked down from on high, saw all dharmas. They were empty. How else do we access Guanyin Bodhisattva? Okay, we got the name. We know where Guanyin appears. We know that Guanyin was a Buddha in the past. H how did this Buddha transformed into a Bodhisattva hope to help? What was Guanyin's method now? The method that she gave was not just one. There were many. There were multiple methods. The first one on the screen says, Shun Sheng Jiu Ku, pursuing sounds or voices, she rescues us from suffering. Guanyin saves us from seven kinds of difficulties, liberates us from three kinds of poison, fulfills two different wishes, takes us, rescues us from 14 kinds of fear and explains 19 different specific Buddha dharmas. Where is this? This is from the chapter of the Lotus Sutra that we're going to be looking into right away. This is all from the Fa Hua Jing Fu Man Pin, from the Universal Door chapter of the Lotus. Furthermore, Guan Yin appears in 32 different bodies. Man, that's remarkable, huh? Take a look. Guan Yin Bodhisattva hears our cries, hears our sounds, not just the sad ones, also the happy ones. She hears them. She, uh, she contemplates and perceives our need for help. It saves us from seven troubles, purges three poisons, fulfills two wishes for boys or girls, ends 14 kinds of fears, speaks dharma in 19 ways, and miraculously makes appear 32 transformation bodies, Huashan, response bodies. This is how Guanyin Bodhisattva, in the Lotus Sutras, Universal Door Chapter, right? All of these methods appear in the Fu Manpin that we're going to study. Hmm. Look at that. I mean, what are you doing with your Friday afternoon, with your Saturday morning? Huh? What What have you got on your on your plate today? Well, Guanyin Bodhisattva gave herself some work to do. Said, "Yeah, I want to. Well, we'll find a way. I'll find a way to help." These are where people suffer, and I can find a way to end those sufferings. Here's how. Right? Wowie. 
you're looking at Doug Powers there in the foreground who has a story about the rescues that Guanyin Bodhisattva can do. Doug, against advice, <laughs> no, nobody ever stopped Doug from an adventure. Doug was on an adventure. He was in Trenganu, East Malaysia, the east coast of Western Malaysia, that is. And he wanted to go to K2, the mountain, and climb it. He wanted to get up to Nepal and climb K2. Well, <laughs> against advice, he got up there and he fell off K2 or was pushed off, not clear. Landed on a rock ledge, didn't fall into a crevasse and vanish, but he landed on a rock ledge, broke many bones in his body and spent the next couple of days conversing with Guanyin Bodhisattva who kept him alive. His consciousness left his body. He was looking back at his broken body on this rock ledge in a snowstorm in Nepal. On K2. And remarkably, as the Royal Nepali Air Force helicopter lifted him off the ridge and got him back on a plane to the Stanford Hospital where the doctors repaired his bones, uh, Doug's faith in Guanyin Bodhisattva reached a place that has never wavered. So personal stories of rescue from Guanyin. Some of these individuals in the photo people will recognize like Nipun, for example, Nipun Mehta, David Rounds and other friends. So Guanyin Bodhisattva's practices, these ways to access Guanyin are called Dharma methods of great compassion, Da Bei Fa Men, Guan Xin Pu Sa Da Bei Fa Men, Shun Sheng Jiu Ku, Yu Qiu Bi Ying, Chi Ming Nian Sheng Hao, Song Chi Da Bei Zhou, Li Bai Da Bei Chan, Er Gen Yuan Tong Fa Men, Xiu Chi Si Shi Er Shou Yan, Song Chi Pu Men Ping. So Guan Yin Bodhisattva said, um, here are ways to access this, uh, what I'm hoping to, to offer you. You have to ask for it, but if you do, here's how I want to help you. Recite Guan Yin's many names, pick a language. Recite the Great Compassion Mantra. Bow the Great Compassion Repentance Ceremony. Return the hearing, listen to the nature. Cultivate the 42 hands and eyes. Recite the Universal Door chapter of the Lotus Sutra. Okay, look at all these different methods. Huh. So we heard about the ways in the Pumanpin within one chapter that Guan Yin Bodhisattva saves from troubles, grants wishes, banishes fear, etc. But outside of the Pumanpin, outside of the great, the Universal Door chapter, there are other methods as well. Recite Guan Yin's name, right? Namo Guan Shin Pusa, probably the most common, the most widely used. The mantra, Namo Hulla, Namo Dola, Yeye, Namo Oliye, right? Great Compassion Mantra. The Dabe Chan bowed every day at City of 10,000 Buddhas. Many people, many individuals do it themselves at home in their own personal space. You don't need a big Buddha hall to, to, to bow the Great Compassion Repentance. You can do it right wherever you are. The method beloved by Chan practitioners, meditationers, meditation practitioners worldwide is this marvelous method. Manjushri Bodhisattva identifies this method as 
the most useful for beings in this age, using the ear. Use your ability to listen with your ear. Turn it around to listen to your own nature. And in the Sharangama Sutra, it's step by step, he explains it. Then there's this esoteric method called the Susha Arshoya and the 42 hands and eyes, which is connected to the Great Compassion Mantra. And there is reciting sutras, Pumanpin, memorizing, memorizing. Uh, we could actually, I'm going to add that right here. Uh, reciting the Universe Door chapter. Hold on here. Text. Arrange. Let's see here. Text. I'm put my cursor right there. From memory. Shrink text to fit. There we go. Come back here. Okay, there we go. Recite Guanyin's name, Great Compassion Mantra. Bow the Great Compassion Repentance. Return the hearing to listen to the nature. Cultivate 42 hands. Recite the Universal Door Chapter from memory. Recite the name and mantra of Amitabha. Or, still didn't work, did it? Recite the name and mantra of Amitabha Buddha will also connect you with Guan Yin or Om Mani Padme Hum. Guan Yin Bodhisattva six syllable mantra. That will do it too. Look at all those different ways of accessing Guan Yin Bodhisattva's compassion. Okay, how universal Guan Yin Pusa should how far does Guan Yin Bodhisattva's compassion go? Well, Burma, Myanmar, Putoshan, and the East China Sea, Saigon, Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, I'm sorry, that should be uh, Ho Chi Minh City, and Burlingame, California, and your heart, right? That's how far. So uh, let's do that one. Guan Yin Bodhisattva's universality. Santa Barbara. That's, that's different. That's not what it said in Chinese. Um, traveling in 1983 to Pagan, Burma, um, certainly without any question, uh, thoroughly, thoroughly Theravada, Pali based. Buddhist place amid the many, the 1100 stupas in Pagan, uh, we found the Ananda Pagoda, the Ananda Stupa. There was an image of Guan Yin Bodhisattva. And we thought, wow, Guan Yin really gets around. To have Guan Yin Bodhisattva turn up in Burma, in Myanmar. Yep. Potola Mountain, people know their stories there. I'll save them for now. Okay. Question here. How does one realize something called same body great compassion or identity in physical makeup great compassion first we have to acknowledge the four elements of the body earth water fire wind or air okay going to move past this here same body 
great compassion is a name very useful this is this is worth knowing um there we go same body great compassion um another way to say it is identity in substance physical identity every body everyone's body the body that we all each of us possess can be analyzed back into four elements solid parts liquid parts moisture warmth and spaces air earth water fire air four elements everyone who's ever been born right your great 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 grandmother and mine and your great 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 grandchild in the future will also be made of these four elements the white sulfur crested cockatoo outside my window at this moment has earth air fire and water in her makeup and the brush turkey who's walking around honking also all creatures from earthworms to whales to eagles share earth air fire and water same isn't that true so here's the earth element the same in all living beings right here's the earth element right the what the water the liquid parts nobody has a different makeup all the same what else the warmth we call it centigrade we call it fahrenheit the fire same in every living being okay and the space the hair pores the hollowness of the bones right same in every living being air element in the lungs right in the molecules most molecules are space so how interesting since it's all the same question arises what is really different what is really different hmm um you could say the inner part the part that isn't made up of earth air fire and water the soul the nature the holy ghost what do we call it hmm now the uh okay recall the strength of guanyin um i have a couple stories here and one of the the best uh, one of the best ways that guanyin bodhisattva appears to us is through when we practice those methods that we've just been looking at so i was a college professor graduate class at uc berkeley's seminary north campus called guanyin called guanyin bodhisattva academy no called <coughs> great no what's it really called graduate theological union gtu this is a seminary that connects to uc berkeley and in my buddhist christian dialogue class here was a catholic nun she was vietnamese her name was sister mary pham and she told a story we introduced ourselves in the class and everybody talked about their spiritual journey she said well you're probably all wondering why as a vietnamese person i'm a catholic nun she said well i was raised buddhist like everyone <laughs> in vietnam and she said my mother was really really devout oh she was a faithful buddhist she 
connected to Guanyin Bodhisattva. Oh, Guantian Bodha. And when uh, the Republic of Vietnam lost to the North in 1975, when America retreated, many of us wanted to leave and that was hard to do. There was a way, however, and the method was there were boats. And if you could collect a certain amount of gold, because the money wasn't worth anything, paper money, but the gold, the gold was still valuable. If you collected enough gold and you knew where to go and you knew somebody who had a boat, you could show up and negotiate a place on the boat for a certain amount of gold. Well, I was the youngest. I actually, I had a, a sister who was just a little older, but I was the more mature one. And we had two brothers above us. So I was, out of four kids, I was the youngest. And <clears throat> My mother set her heart to getting us all out of Vietnam. And uh, so she scraped together enough gold and started with her oldest son. And she found a boat leaving. She learned how to do it. She packed my oldest brother uh, some food and an image of Guan Yin and recitation beads took him down to the dock at night and the boat that was designed to hold 150 people had 300 people on it and it was so low in the water and the captain was torn because he knew he might sink but he couldn't resist collecting more gold so he kept packing people on my mother had to decide risk it or not. So she thought, well, Guan Yin will protect him. And she put my son, my, my brother on the boat, gave him the captain the gold and went home and started to pray. And she prayed, Namo Guan Tien Po Ta, Namo Guan Nam, Shun Sheng Jiu Ku, Namo Guan Xin Pu Sa, Namo Jiu Ku Jiu Nan, Guan Xin Pu Sa. I return my life to the awakened being who hears the sounds of the world and saves us from suffering and disaster and trouble. She recited, said Sister Mary, she said, oh, she recited and she recited, she bowed and she recited, she was so sincere. And of course, we didn't hear anything. My mother didn't take that as a defeat. She continued to recite. She recited, she recited for seven months that way. And we got a letter from a camp in the Philippines saying, mom, I'm safe. I'm going to be uh, picked up by the United Nations and sent overseas. I can go to Canada or Australia or the US. Where should I go? <laughs> oh, my mother was so happy. She cried and cried. She said, Guan Yin Bodhisattva is so compassionate. Right? And then guess what? She started on my second brother <coughs> has to get the gold. And, oh, my goodness. So Sister Mary said, that's why I believe in Guan Yin. And she said, there's more. And we're like, everybody's at the edge of their seats now hearing these stories. She said, my uncle was sick. My uncle was a farmer. He lived out in a village outside of Saigon. And oh, was it dangerous? because the, the, the fighting was still going on. And she said, my mother resolved that she was going to get medicine out to her brother, my uncle. And everyone said, don't be foolish. How can you possibly get out and back safely? Mother, my mother said, I believe in Guan Tien Po Ta. Yeah, but you're putting your life on the line. So because uh, we had to, uh, there was nobody to take care of her daughter, she took her two daughters with her, me and my sister. And we went out on a bus and we could hear 
you know, shells exploding. We could hear machine guns going off on all sides, but the bus made it to the village. And we went running from the bus stop into where my, my uncle's home was. And he wasn't there. There was no one home. And so as we were looking high and low for my uncle, we heard coming down the street, the sound of machine guns. We heard the, there were active soldiers, military combatants coming down the street. So my mother lifted a rug off the floor and opened a trap door that was in the floor, took me and my sister, stuffed us down there. There was just enough room for the two of us. She put the trap door back. She covered it with a rug and sat down in full lotus on top of the floor and was reciting Namo Guante Mpota, Joko Jona, right? Joko Jona Nguan Shri Mposa. I return my life and find refuge in the awakened being of great compassion who saves us from suffering and difficulties. She recited and she was just over our heads. We could hear and feel our mother's sincerity. And just as the, the uh, sounds of the active military combat came over our heads, we heard a male voice, commanding male voice saying, keep moving, don't stop, move on down, keep going. This commanding male voice sounding like a military captain or someone in charge, keep moving, don't stop. And sure enough, the machine guns and the explosions passed by and left the village. And when it was quiet, my mother yanked the rug up and lifted the trap door and pulled us out and hugged us and said, now do you believe how compassionate Guan Yin is? <laughs> We're in the classroom listening to Sister Mary tell the story about Guan Yin's rescues. She said, that's why I believe in Guan Yin Bodhisattva. And we said, well, yeah, but, 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 but your brother made it out. She said, oh, no, no, five years ago, we had a family reunion. My mother, my father, my sister, and both brothers. We're all in LA safe. Her faith got us all out safely, she said. Yeah. And then we said, but Sister Mary, why are you a Catholic nun? She said, it's because I believe in Guanyin Bodhisattva. <laughs> what? Okay. Deep faith. Namo Guan Shri and Pusa. All right. So how about that? Here is Shifu, Master Shrinhua, rescuing pigeons in Gold Mountain Monastery. Pigeons that after the liberating life, wouldn't fly away. Shifu, in his compassion, said, we have to extend that compassion to all beings. This is a picture that was painted from a photograph. Someone said this was a photograph taken outside an F-86 fighter jet above Taiwan. An American fighter pilot based in Taiwan in the 1970s, looked out his window of his fighter jet during a storm, said, saw this image. Some people go, absolutely, I believe it. Others go, mm, maybe. Does that stretch the bounds of your credulity? Well, take a look at that. This is taken on Putoshan, Mount Potala, traditionally said to be Guanyin Bodhisattva's home in the South China Sea. Two islands, Put Puto and Luoqie, right? And somebody turned a camera on a very interesting set of clouds at sunset. What about that? What do you make of that? Is that just an ordinary sunset or is that something different? 
some people instantly believe others just hmm, much more to learn hmm? the guanyin bodhisattva at the atkins library in kansas city the atkins museum guanyin bodhisattva with a mustache because various incarnations of guanyin have been male but is she male is she female is she beyond gender some say that in india guanyin was a male she came to china she became female this is the guanyin bodhisattva right here just down below me the gold coast armor realm Guanyin Bodhisattva with a fish basket. It's a great story, traditional story. Guanyin Bodhisattva with the white robe, much beloved. This is Photoshop Guanyin, right? Hoyt Tara. Photoshop Guanyin, Green Tara. This is a Tibetan version, Chunrizi. Green Tara. White Tara. Native American Guanyin. So what do we make of all this? I think it's that humanity needs this compassionate being whether it's the Blessed Virgin, whether it's Guanyin Bodhisattva, however we conceive of her, we reach for someone gentle, someone strong, someone who can hear us and who responds. Pachi and Bodhisattva. And as our series continues, we're going to be turning to a text called the Universal Door Chapter, the Pumanpin, from the Lotus Sutra, chapter 25. And in that chapter, it tells the details of this awakened being. Guanyin Bodhisattva also um, appears in song, in literature, in theater, right? Guanyin Bodhisattva is medicine. Guanyin Bodhisattva appears when needed uh, in whatever form we need. We're going to discover in the universal door, the Pumanpin, that Guanyin Bodhisattva's ability includes appearing in different forms. So as needed, uh, Guanyin Bodhisattva can appear to help us crossover from whatever ails us, right? So so the question uh, from Anhui is, since why did the Sister Mary become a Catholic nun when she was devoted to Guanyin? we asked her the same question. 
I told the story and I left it deliberately open like that because why it didn't make sense to us either. But she said, and clearly there was there was more to the story. Uh, it may have been that uh, she had been promised by her mother at a certain age to a local Catholic church or she volunteered at a Catholic church and wound up you know, taking the robe. It wasn't clear, but there was more to the story than we knew. And it seemed funny to us too. <laughs> we said, why did you become a Catholic nun? Because I loved Juan Yimpusa so much. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> don't know, don't know the answer. Seemed like a mystery too. But we don't want to fight. If she could serve Guan Yin in the close of a Catholic nun, so be it. There's no fundamental fight between the religions. Okay, more to come. Stay tuned. Thank you all for joining. Please get your vaccine shot when the chance comes up. Don't wait. A thousand people a day are still dying. That's, and that's inconceivable to us now, but it's happening. So let's transfer merit to all beings who can hear the sound of our chanting. I have a, in the sick and ailing cockatoo, two of them in fact here, beautiful large white birds who contracted a disease that is taking their lives. Um, hope that they can be reborn successfully, safely in Amitabha's Pure Land. All right, here we go. Please make that wish to transfer merit. Thanks for joining everyone. Look forward to seeing you next week. Stay tuned and turn your hearts to Guanyin Bodhisattva. Amitofo, Amma Guanxin Pusa. See you all next week. <laughs>